We're live. Welcome back. I'm Pastor Doug. Hopefully, Ron will be joining us shortly. He is in the shower, and so hopefully he gets out in time to to join with us. Anyways, tonight we are reading from... Let's turn our mic on. Sorry. It helps if I turn the mic on. I'm Pastor Doug. Rowan should be joining us shortly. He's in the shower. Hopefully he gets out in time to join us for part of tonight. Sounds like the water just turned off. That's the, the handy thing I have in the hot water heater in the studio. Anyways, um, tonight we are reading from 1 Kings chapter 18. Welcome to a moment of joy. I, I invite you to read along. 1 Kings comes... After 2 Samuel and before 2 Kings, it's about a quarter of the way into your Bible. And, uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about the Bible after we're done this chapter. We're going to read the whole chapter tonight. So, okay. After a long time in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Go and present yourself to Ahab. I will send rain on the land. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. Now the famine was severe in Samaria, and Ahab had summoned Obadiah, the palace administrator. Obadiah was a devout believer in the Lord, while Jezebel was killing off the Lord's prophets. Obadiah had taken a hundred prophets and hidden them in two caves, fifty in each, and had supplied them with food and water. Ahab had said to Obadiah, Go through the land to all the springs and valleys. Maybe we can find some grass to keep the horses and mules alive so we will not have to kill any of our animals. So they divided the land they were to cover. Ahab going in one direction, Obadiah in another. As Obadiah was walking along, Elijah met him. Obadiah recognized him bowed down to the ground and said, Is it really you, my lord Elijah? Yes, he replied. Go tell your master Elijah is here. What have I done wrong? asked Obadiah. That you are handing your servant over to Ahab to be put to death. As surely as the Lord lives, there is not a nation or kingdom where my master has not sent someone to look for you. And whenever a nation or kingdom claimed you were not there, He made them swear they could not find you. But now you tell me to go to my master and say Elijah is here? I don't know where the Spirit of the Lord may carry you when I leave you. If I go and tell Ahab and he doesn't find you, he will kill me. Yet I, your servant, have worshipped the Lord since my youth. Haven't you heard, my Lord, what I did while Jezebel was killing the prophets of the Lord? I hid a hundred of The Lord's prophets in two caves, fifty in each, and supplied them with food and water. And now you tell me to go to my master and say, Elijah is here? He will kill me. Elijah said, As surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will surely present myself to Ahab today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and told him, And Ahab went to meet Elijah. When he saw Elijah, he said, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. But you and your father's family have. You have abandoned the Lord's commands and followed the Baals. Now summon the people over from all over Israel to meet me at Mount Carmel. And bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat, who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the prophets and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bowls for us. 
Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves. Let them cut it into pieces and put it on wood, but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God who answers by fire. He is God. Then all the people said, What you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one of the bulls and prepare it first, since there are so many of you. Call on the name of your God, but don't let light the fire so they took the bull given them and prepared it then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon Baal answer us they shouted but there was no response no one answered and they danced around the altar they had made at noon Elijah began to taunt them shout louder he said surely he is a god perhaps he's deep in thought or busy or traveling Maybe he's sleeping, and you must awaken him. So they shouted louder, and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. Midday passed, and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice, but there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come here to me. They came to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. Elijah took twelve stones, one for each of the tribes of the descendants of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Your name shall be Israel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. He dug a trench around it large enough to hold two sayas of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bulls into pieces, and laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, Fill four large jars with water, and pour it on the offering, and on the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered, and they did it a third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. At the time of the sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all the things you command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me so that the people will know that you, Lord our God, and you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and it licked up all the water in the trenches. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Then Elijah commanded them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. They seized them. And Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley and slaughtered there. And Elijah said to Ahab, Go, eat and drink, for there is the sound of heavy rain. So Ahab went off to eat and drink. But Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, bent down to the ground, put his face between his knees. Go and look towards the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. There's nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, Go back. The seventh time the servant reported, A cloud, as small as a man's hand, is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, Go and tell Ahab, Hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose, and a heavy rain started falling. And Ahab rode off to Jezreel. The power of the Lord came on Elijah, and tucking his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Any questions?
So you missed the first part. Mm-hmm. In the first part, Elijah was talking to Ahab's right hand man, mm-hmm. and his name was Obadiah. Not one of my mind. And if we go, oh, about three quarters of the way into the Bible, in between Amos and Jonah, there's a book called Obadiah. It's important when we read the Bible to read the whole Bible because different things are happening. And and it's also important to recognize those types of things because you take something like First Kings, which encompasses a whole yeah, giant yeah, got, section got, of I got, history. I got a question. Yeah. Can I finish my thought first? Sure. So you take, uh, like, there's historic books, and they take a big chunks of history, and they give a quick overview, and then there's smaller books that talk about specific events. And so, important to read the Bible with that in mind. Okay, go ahead. Do you have to read them in order? Like, no. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, so, so like, the this is not an order. Like, it's more encouraged to like read a, a book and then go read another book and not like go in order. I, I, it depends on what you're doing. It depends on on how what you're trying to study and and what you're trying to learn. So, yeah, does that make sense? All right. Um, like Ezra and Nehemiah should pretty much be read together. Because they were, like, hanging out. You know what I mean? Um, Kings and Chronicles. Good to read together. So, things like that. We will. Yeah, but you said it's a good time. Right, but we, we're we're doing Old Testament, New Testament, Old Testament, New Testament. That's that's a different way of studying, which we're also doing, which is what we've decided to but, do. But you just said. Yeah, okay. I'm just saying these periods of times, depending on what you're studying and what you want to learn. So, like, the first part of first, first of all, why are you whispering? Nobody can hear you, and it's very irritating. It's the no, no, talk. Why not? Like after First Kings, we're gonna do First Thessalonians. Well, you're Kings just gonna tell them the whole list. Well, we've got things planned out for a while. At least until At least September. Year. Yeah. September. Oh, I think we'll still be September. In Second Kings in September. It's two months. Three. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Not two months. Five months. But One month. But then you also have to understand, like, you know, s- when we're doing Second Samuel and we're reading about David, you could open up several of the Psalms that 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 David wrote, or or when we were doing First Kings and at the beginning and we're reading about Solomon, we could read Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, right? Like, because different things go together. That's all I'm trying to say. And it's important to read the whole Bible in context of that. Anyways, uh, if anybody has any questions, leave them in the comments. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Oh, let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you give us. And we pray that your spirit guides us as we read your word. And we pray that you would learn that, w- that we would learn what you would have us learn. And we pray that you would give us a, a love for your word. This we pray in Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow evening at 8.30 for another moment of joy. Goodbye.